alike can travel halfway around the world while the truth is just putting on its shoes, says Mark Twain, an American author. Today is April 13, and the last several days has been a very difficult and a devastating time for me and people like me who follow His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. I'm sure you all have witnessed the ongoing smear attempts and trolling that is going happening in the internet against His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. Today um, I want you to take back into the timeline. I I'm here to look at the entire scenario with a fresh perspective and try to analyze what really happened and what has to be clarified. <laughs> The, the, that, that even was happened in February and and the same thing was broadcasted in all Tibetan news media and when I first saw this news coverage in Tibetan I did not see anything obscene I did, did not see anything erotic about the cute exchange and interaction between His Holiness and the young kid But then, eventually, people started to troll His Holiness and label him with unimaginable names. In this thing, if we look closely what really happened, I can totally understand people kind of judge and people try to understand the situation from different prisms and different scenarios and different perspectives. I can totally get it. but. I'm here to tell you that it's also equally important to look the situation from His Holiness's point of view, from the point of view, view of an innocent uh, children's point of view. As you all know, His Holiness has a very playful, innocent nature. He's very transparent as a person. That's what we love about His Holiness. That's what I like about His Holiness. So there is no reason to project your own uh, imagination into this cute banter between His Holiness and the young kid. Then people immediately jump to the conclusion that this is inappropriate. And some people even says that if this is happening right in front of the camera, what might be happening behind curtain? This is not how the logic works. The reason why this interaction happened before camera indicates that His Holiness has nothing to hide and it is nothing to, there is nothing sort of inappropriate happening there. As simple as that. But now people try to project their own imagination on this and try to sort of label different names, which is a very unfortunate situation. Okay, whatever the case, now I want you to I want you to take back to the timeline of events and how this entire trolling happened and how this um, masked wildfire of misinformation happened. Who are responsible for sh sharing this? Who are responsible for spreading false information? Let's go back into timeline. Okay. As I told you before, today is April 8th, uh, sorry, sorry, April 13th. Let's go back to April 8th, what really happened in April 8th. So April 8th, in the tutor, there is a tutor, uh, there is a guy whose Twitter handle name is Joost Brokers. And he, um, apparently his hand, Twitter account is suspended temporarily. I don't know why, but his Twitter account is temporarily suspended. And he started to tweet about this interaction and started to questioning whether this is appropriate or how can he do this, blah, blah, blah. And his tweets are deleted because his Twitter account is no more there. But um, people's response to uh, the tweets of this uh, guy, Joost Broker, is still there. You can see there. I'll also put it here. And then the next day, April 9th, 
around 6 14 a.m indian standard time there is a lady by the name sangeeta in twitter she um according according to her twitter account she says that she is a writer and a part-time goddess i don't know what uh, really that means and then she tweets by retweeting that guy who whose identity is unknown to us now she started with that utterly shocked to see the display of the Dalai Lama and all and all and that tweet has got 436 retweets and 1655 likes so this lady Sangeeta who claims her to be a writer retweets this unknown guy and start to say that okay she was shocked to see the display of the Lama blah 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 but if the, if she really did care about what really happened she could have cross-checked the information they've checked about the reliability of this weird information but she didn't she just started to tweet and then again the same day april 9 morning 11 54 a.m indian standard time there is another lady in twitter by the name deepika pushkanath she is an advocate human and political right activist based in jammu and kashmir she retweets sangeeta's tweet by saying that what the hell is this dalai lama and that there are more to it as time goes on and around 12 34 pm she got a video clip that was earlier broadcasted in the voice of america tibetan uh, news channel she took the footage live footage from there and put it on her twitter account and then started to questioning about what what is going on there uh, okay and then again on april 9 afternoon 2 32 pm indian standard time there is a news coverage in ndtv and that news article was edited by Aditi Gautam. Aditi Gautam was again, she was an associate news editor at NDTV. And the, hand, the, the heading of the news was Dalai Lama's video asking minor boy to suck his tongue triggers row. So as far as I understand, this is the first major news media who broadcasted this. And then she also um, put there a picture and says that the screen grab from video tweeted by Deepika. So Deepika's video was taken from the Voice of America Tibetan broadcast. And then when that picture was shown in the NDTV, the face of the kid was pixelated, was blurred. To indicate there is, they don't want to show you something, you know. And then we'll go down on on the same day april 9 7 29 pm news 18 published another article saying dalai lama faced backlash of a viral video of his kissing minor boy asking him to suck his tongue blah 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 and if they this ndtv and news channel they have um news editors and they are supposed to deliver reliable and authentic news to the people they, they should have checked cross-checked double-checked the rely, re reliability of the source of that information if they did that all this emotional trauma would not have happened then on next day april 10 morning 11 29 a.m hindustan times also published the same article around the same heading and then on the same day around 11 30 a.m the office of his Holy minister dalai lama issued a letter of apology now after that the media took this opportunity and misinterpreted the entire scenario his holiness office issued a letter of apology but that is not an a letter of acknowledgement that a inappropriate action was committed or but out of humility his holiness office 
issued a letter of apology stating that whoever were offended by this interaction maybe some people call it politically incorrect interaction he just apologized for this um, reason Not, and after that the media started to uh, you know say weird things and they started to put fancy weird unimaginable headlines and try to look that information as serious as it seems and because of the irresponsible act of these major news houses media houses millions of people who follow his holiness the 14th dalai lama were their sentiments were heard which is very a major media house they have editors and they're supposed to deliver authentic news and still they didn't care to cross check the source of information and started to just publish rubbish things and we all know the story what happened after uh, his offices issued in the term of apology i'm not going to go deep into this so what i wanted to say is that we all know that who is responsible for spreading this false information i demand an apology from these individuals and if you do demand an ap apology from these individuals and major news houses who started to uh, sort of uh, publish uh, rubbish things and you know baseless allegations about his holiness the dalai lama without even checking the source of this information it's very irresponsible as a major media house it's very irresponsible and if you too demand this share this video and let's stop the spread of this misinformation it's already uh, caused immense damage and emotional trauma to the millions of people and we should stop this immediately there has been a lot of um, clarification reg regarding what has actually happened there so i'm not going to um, repeat that majority many of them many of people who show concern about the incidents but themselves were the victims of misinformation and now the truth is out even the boy is interview after meeting solanus is already out so there is no need to still spread this false information please don't do it i urge you to help me join hand with us who really care about uh, truth and stop this um, ongoing trolling so before i go on i just wanted to give an unsolicited advice to those major news media houses and individuals who claim to care so much about um, the rights of children or you know whatever as i told you earlier there are few individuals who are involved in this who who claim themselves to be activist human rights activist to those millions of tibetan children are isolated from their parents and sent forced in board, colonial boarding school their fundamental rights are snatched from them i would like you to speak against it and there are a lot more cases not only in tibet let's just look into the neighboring countries whether in afghanistan yemen or whatever wherever I want you to speak against those and again let me conclude this by telling you a beautiful anecdote of Socrates 
we all know about him. Socrates is a great Greek philosopher. So one time, one of his friends approached Socrates and says that, hey, I heard something bad about your friend. And then Socrates replied that, hold on, hold on, before you go on, before you go further, I want to give you the test of three sieves or three filters. Um, and he, Socrates advised that before you pass any information, it is very important to filter them or, or to test them through three, uh, three filters. Okay, then he goes, the first sieve or the first filter is that of truth. So that means that you should ask, have you checked what you're going to say is true? And then his friend says, no, I, I don't know, I just heard. And then, okay, so you don't know whether it's true or not, but still you wanted to tell me about it. Fair enough. Okay, now let's go on to the second test. That is the test of kindness. The thing that you're going to tell me, or the information that you're going to pass on, is it helpful? And then the guy says, no, absolutely. It's just the contrary. It's not a good information. Okay, then Socrates says, the information which you're going to pass on is not true. You don't know whether it's true or not, and it's not helpful, but still you wanted to pass on the information. Okay, let's see whether you still can pass the third C for the third filter. And that is the filter of utility. The information that you are going to pass. Is it useful? Is it beneficial? And his friend says, no, it's not beneficial. It's not useful to anyone. And then Socrates says that what you're going to tell is neither true nor good, nor useful, but still you wanted to tell this. Why? So from this we can learn a huge lesson, especially those who we are living in the age of, you know, uh, um, social media and everyone has this, everyone is equipped with passing on information. So before you pass on to any information, it's really important to try to filter them through these three tests. The filter of the truth, the filter of kindness and the filter of utility. And if you still find, if you, if you test, if you pass the test of these three sieves, then only pass on the information. Now, let's talk about the implication of this unfortunate incident. Those people who claim to care about the rights of children and those people who claim to um, sort of uh, claim to care to protect the innocence of the children, so on and so on. For those people, what you have done? Now, it's really time to introspect and see what you have done. Now the truth is out and if you are willing to accept the truth and if you are unbiased, I'm sure that you really know what actually happened and all the allegations are utterly baseless. Having said that, the damage is done. You have heard the sentiments of the millions of followers of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, including myself. We had a hard time sleeping, passing time for the past few days. We felt helpless. We, hel we felt desperate. We felt helpless. But we tried to gather the courage to face this unfortunate event. And now the truth is out. But I wanted to remind you that because of your irresponsible and careless and quick to jump to the conclusion what you have caused, you have created all this mess. Now, this beautiful interaction between the young kid and his holiness was you know, portrayed as an um, unfortunate, abusive interaction. I'm sure you all have seen the, how the uh, little kid expresses his joy to meet his holiness, his holiness 
and he was uh, his joy to be able to get so close to him his interviews are out we can see the joy in his face now all this joy all this beautiful moment was totally destroyed by your irresponsible act now we know that there was nothing happened in that event but you portrayed this kid as a victim of an abuse what have you done is it really how you care about a right of a children i don't think so so i i, I urge you i request all of you to stop spreading this false information and if you really care about the rights first be responsible be truthful and don't be quick to jump to the conclusion and i hope this um this video might shed some light and give some perspective on what really happened i'm not even comfortable how how to speak before camera but i'm compelled to speak because we cannot remain silent like this So if you, as I told you earlier, if you again think that this ongoing trolling and smear campaign has to stop, join hand with me, share this video widely and help these people responsible for their um, irresponsible act and spreading false information. And finally, we love His Holiness, our faith is still as strong as mountain, as deep as ocean and may His Holiness continues to serve the humanity. We need His wisdom. Before I wind up, let me just leave with a brief information about what He did about the welfare of children. We are living in a day and age where the material development is advancing. At the same time, people are suffering more from the lack of um, emotional hygiene, emotional health. To counter this situation, His, His Holiness, under His guidance, a happiness curriculum was started, established. And now it's applied in many schools in New Delhi and across India. Because of that, the parents even expressed their joy and they're very happy to see the positive transformation. And again, under the leadership of His Holiness Dalai Lama and guided by His Holiness, an entire curriculum about universal ethics is still um, teaching in many institutions because of that many children are getting benefited so we should remember the kindness of his holiness i think this ongoing you know baseless trolling is very unfair to his holiness for what he did for the past many decades not only to tibetans but to the entire humanity. To His Holiness, He represents, He's the purest being we can even imagine. And to sort of taint Him with such unimaginable level, it's, it's beyond, 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 it's another level of extreme view. So I think this is very unfair to him. That's why I am here to talk about the truth. And if you are with me, um, help me to spread this information and let, pe let this truth reach to more people. As I started by quoting Mark Twain, the false information can travel very fast, but it takes time for the truth to reach same magnitude. May truth prevails and long live His Holiness the Dalai Lama. 
Thank you.